Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. Um, my name is Angie, if you are new to my channel, welcome and thank you so much for joining me on this Christmas evening um, as we do a little diamond painting and talk about some fun holiday things. Um, I hope you are all enjoying your holiday. Um, I'm hoping that my holiday, because I'm recording this in advance, obviously, I'm hoping that my holiday is going to be going well and I have every um, expectation that it's going to go off without a hitch. Um, as I'm recording this is we are fully prepared, well, as close as humanly possible to being fully prepared for the um, festivities as we possibly could be. Um, I hope that yours are going well and you are enjoying your time too. Um, so I, my YouTube, my name is Angie. Um, on YouTube, my name is Craft NATO, and it is that because I do all kinds of crafting. Um, I crochet, I do miniatures, I do diamond painting. Um, I also do some rock tumbling. I haven't done that on YouTube yet, but I plan to show you some of my rock projects uh, coming up in the future. Um, and what else do I do? I, I know there's more. Um, I also knit. I do cross stitch. Um, I do um, punch needle which is really very fun. I don't think that punch needle gets its fair due in the crafting world. Um, and it, it can be very, very fun. Um, it, it, what's nice about punch needle is you can get a really uh, quick result. It, it, it doesn't take long to get a really pretty uh, finished product. So that's what I like about that. Um, cross stitch, I love cross stitch. Don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm a serious thready person but it does take quite a long time to finish some of those projects, especially when you're working on, you know, high uh, count um, fabrics, which I prefer, if I'm going to work on a project, I prefer to work on like a 36 or even a 40 count linen. So I like the high fabric count. I like the way that the finished product looks, but it does take forever to finish a project when you're working with that kind of stuff. So today I'm continuing to work on my Christmas truck. If you're a member of my channel or a subscriber to my channel, you guys have seen me work on this for quite some time. It's not going to be finished for Christmas. Um, I came to the realization of that very late in the game. I, I really thought I was going to be able to barrel through and you know stay up all night and get it finished but it's just not going to happen and there has been so much anxiety that I've taken off of my shoulders I think that this is true for most of us when it comes to the holidays especially for women and I don't mean to be sexist but um, I was watching uh, I think Good Morning America and they were giving some facts about the holidays and the increased stress level of parents around the holidays and there was a figure and it was something like um, double um, with moms actually experience almost double the amount of holiday anxiety as dads do and I don't think that it's so much that the dads aren't doing their fair share. I just think that as women, sometimes we tend to put way too much pressure on ourselves to make sure that everything is going to be perfect and um, and to try to get so much done. And it, it's really a shame because I think that when you do that, and I am guilty of it um, to the extreme, I think when you do that, it really starts to take away from the joy of the season. So the last day or so, in the past day or so, I've decided to relax on this and not push myself and not um, realize that it's not going to be the end of the world if this canvas doesn't get finished for its gift recipient. It's for my dad and my stepmom and they will completely understand that I didn't get it finished. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you would have seen all the finishes that I did get done 
for the holidays for gift giving, and there were quite a few. Um, I crocheted Christmas tree skirts. I have since Thanksgiving crocheted seven Christmas tree skirts, and they are not uh, small size either. I expanded on the given patterns to make them a larger size because I just didn't think they were quite big enough in the way the patterns were written. So I made them quite a bit larger than what the patterns were written for, and I did seven of them. I was very, very lucky that my husband um, did help me with weaving in all of my tails. At the end of that project, he was watching football last Sunday and uh, was very graciously offered to help me out with that. So I taught him how to do that, and he sat there and wove in tails while he was watching football which was amazing. It was a huge weight off my shoulders and really got a lot of work done. He has also been phenomenal the last couple of days with wrapping. I was woefully behind in getting my gifts wrapped. I hadn't had anything wrapped at all. And uh, between yesterday and today, um, today being the days that I'm recording this, uh, he managed to wrap every single present. So I did the getting them ready, like prep the boxes and put the tissue paper in and, you know, all of that fun stuff. But he was really the one who sat there and for hours on end just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped, wrapped gifts. I'm really lucky that my husband is such a willing participant in my holiday shenanigans. Uh, and he kind of deals with me when I get stressed out and you know, kind of takes it all in stride and, um, you know, it's a good, we're a good balance. We make a good team because I get stressed out and he just kind of does the keep calm and carry on type attitude and plugs away at things until they're done. Now, I do have two large diamond paintings that still need to be framed for giving um, as gifts for Christmas. Of course, by now, by the time you guys are watching this, they will have been framed and gifted already. So I'll let you know how that turns out. But uh, he's going to do that in the morning. Jeff is very talented in terms of construction in many ways. And he is able to build frames for me for my diamond paintings which is a lifesaver, especially when you're um, doing large diamond paintings as gifts, because it can cost a small fortune to have these larger size diamond paintings custom framed. If you've ever priced it out, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can just be just ridiculously expensive, very cost prohibitive um, for, for giving a gift. I mean, we're talking in the hundreds of dollars. So, the fact that he can build these frames and that they look magnificent is just such a bonus and so helpful um, to us financially that, that he has that talent. So I'm extremely thankful to him. I have to say that over the holiday season, um, you know, if we want to talk about the things that we're most thankful for and count our blessings, I have to say that the one thing that I am most thankful for in the world is my husband. He is just an outstanding, um, stellar individual. He puts up with an awful lot from me. He, I am a very pampered, uh, very spoiled, very loved woman. And he really, really takes very good care of me. So... I'm very lucky in that way, and um, and I and I am a re and I do realize it. You know, I, I'm I'm very cognizant of the fact that a lot of people don't have the support that I do, and I'm very lucky that I do have that support. So I in my whip and chat the other day, I kind of went over all of my holiday routines and what we do all the over the holidays and my holiday traditions. So if you've a subscriber to my channel and you've already watched that, I don't want to go through all that all over again with you guys and, you know, talk about things that I've already talked about. 
So we're going to talk about a few other things. I thought maybe I would kind of go back in time and tell you a little bit about my childhood and what, a little bit about what my Christmases were like when I was a child. I was born in 1975. Um, I have two sisters. My sisters are each three years younger than me. So one's three years younger than me, one's six years younger than me. I'm the oldest of three. When I was very young, we did not have much money. Um, we were fairly poor. However, my parents always made it a point to make sure that we had outstanding Christmases. I don't know how they did it financially, but they always, we were never disappointed or lacked for anything when it came to Christmas. We were always very, very lucky and very blessed um, to get the, uh, the, the bounty of gifts that we received and uh, the, the cooking and the baking and all of the experiences. We always got a real Christmas tree. So there's a Christmas tree farm uh, near our community that we live in where you go out and you chop down your own Christmas tree. And they had um, a little warming stations all over the place with bonfires burning. So you could go and warm up by the bonfire and they had hot cocoa. Uh, so you could warm up by the fire and get hot cocoa while you were picking out your tree or after you had chopped down your tree. One of their very famous things that they did is for every Christmas tree that you bought, everybody in the family got a free popcorn ball. And I, we remember as kids looking forward so much to those darn popcorn balls. They were sweet. They were like kettle corn almost um, and then shaped into a ball. And... They, that's one of my fondest memories of my childhood are those stupid popcorn balls. Isn't it strange the way sometimes just the most obscure thing, you know, out of all the, all the money and, and, and time that was spent, one of the best memories I have is of going out and cutting down our Christmas tree and getting those darn popcorn balls. We probably could have bought them at the store, you, you know, but... We didn't. The only time we got them was at the Christmas tree farm. And it was a special thing. It was magical. My parents were always very, very good at making the holidays magical for us. We always um, saw Santa. He would um, always come jingling down the driveway when we were getting ready for bed. And that really always prompted us to get in bed quick so that he would come and give our presents. So Santa always, we never really caught, we, I mean, we would catch a glimpse of him because it would be dark out, but we would hear the gels, bells jingling. We would run to the window and we would catch him just as he was running down the driveway, um, saying ho, 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 and jingling his bells. And it, that was such, that is such a fond Christmas memory um, and that my parents could make that happen for us. And what it took to make that happen for us was just irreplaceable and priceless. So that's, you know, one, one, that's probably one of my best memories ever from Christmas is being able to see Santa every Christmas Eve. So um, then, you know, cookies, my mom baked my mom was an excellent baker. Her father owned a bakery. So we have family recipes going back, you know, before his time even, um, special family recipes from the bakery. And my mother baked prolifically. She baked all kinds of cookies, fudge. She made rock candy. She um, did, you know, Every kind of cookie there was, every kind of cookie bar. I don't know how she did it all. I really don't. I think I, I shared with everyone on my last Whip and Chat um, what happens in my family now. And I'll just share it with you just really briefly because I've already gone over it a couple of times. But my sisters and I do a cookie exchange. So we each make two or three different types of cookies and then we meet up and exchange the 
different types with each other so that we end up with several different types of cookie without having to make all of those different types of cookie. And it really works out well. We've done it for several years now. I'd say we've done it for probably 20 years. And it's lovely. I, I absolutely um, love doing it. And, you know, we turn it into a little event. We get pizza, watch a movie, hang out together. And it's nice. By the time you guys have seen this, we will have already been to my sister's house for Christmas Eve. Um, and have celebrated with that side of my family. We will already have been to my daughter's house to have Christmas breakfast. And as you guys are watching this, um, I will be at my friend Jennifer's and we will be eating Christmas dinner right when this airs. So um, I will definitely be on with you guys. And um, well, you probably already know that. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit awkward about this, but this is the first time that I'm participating in this Christmas premiere um, event, and I'm really excited about it, but I don't really um, know what to expect because I haven't done it before. Um, I've never done a premiere, so I'm not exactly sure, you know, how it's going to work out. I'm going to be fresh and new to it, so I hope that you guys will give show me some grace and some patience if I, if it takes me a little bit to, to figure it out, um, to learn the ropes of what I'm supposed to be doing. And, you know, that's one thing I have to say about my subscribers so far and the um, reception that I've received since I've started you doing YouTube. I started my YouTube channel back the end of March of 2021. And uh, it has been such a fun experience for me. I am a stay-at-home mother. I'm retired, uh, stay-at-home, and I really have met some amazing people. I've become friends with quite a few of the people that I've met, and I look forward. I find that I look forward to everyone's comments, and on the whole... Um, everyone has been just so kind and uh, loving, and I wasn't prepared for that. I really wasn't prepared for the kind of reception that I received, and I'm still amazed every day at the beautiful comments that I get and the um, nice things that subscribers have to say. So, if you're one of those people, thank you so much. It doesn't go unappreciated or unnoticed, even though at times it does take me quite a bit of time to respond to comments. Uh, I'm, I'm not so good at that. And if you know me, you know that I'm technologically challenged, not too big on um, being able to manipulate things technology-wise. I'm pretty bare bones when it comes to that. I do you know, pretty much the, the most simple thing possible. But it's it's working for now, and, you know, you just you take take what you, you... You work with the... Work with the gifts and limitations that you've been given, and uh, do your best from there. And that's what I've been doing, and it's been working out just fine for me. So, um... Like I was saying, so as Christmas, as children at Christmas, even though we did not have much money, my parents didn't have much money, we always had magnificent Christmases. We always had a real tree. We always had the experience of going down and cutting out, cutting up, cutting down our own tree, excuse me, my goodness, and getting the popcorn balls and all of that and then, you know, you have to remember the water, the tree. Now, anymore, we have an artificial tree. I think since I've been married, um, we have gotten a real tree maybe once just to give the kids an experience of what that's like. But it's just so much easier with an artificial tree. And we like to put our tree up rather early. Uh, this year, we put it up well before Thanksgiving. We did it in, I think, the second week of November. 
and it's nice to have it up that long. The problem with a real tree is you have to wait and because you know you don't want it to dry out and die so you have to wait and then you don't get to enjoy it for as long. With a fake tree you can enjoy it for a little bit longer and I think that that's what I enjoy most about having a fake tree. So um, I was just going to ask answer some questions because I have, like I said, I've already talked about my Christmas traditions and everything uh, in my Whippin Chat for the week. So I don't want to rehash all of that stuff um, if you've already watched me in that video. So I'm going to answer a few questions that I found online and, you know, we can talk about those and talk about the answers to those. So the first one that I have is, um, what is the best gift that I've ever given? The best gift that I have ever given would have to be the year that we got the kids a puppy for Christmas. It was so amazing. And we timed it so that, well, it was timed a little bit funny. We had to pick the puppy up a week before Christmas was when the puppies were ready to be separated from their mother and, you know, go to their homes. But we wanted it to be a Christmas surprise. So my boss had older children, he had, they had triplets. They offered to foster our puppy for us for the week before leading up to Christmas and then to bring the puppy over on Christmas morning so that it would be a surprise. And that was just by far the most amazing gift that we were able to give to the kids ever. They were so surprised and shocked. And I mean, what little kid doesn't want a puppy for Christmas, right? Isn't that just the quintessential Christmas gift, I think? Um, since then, we've had a rule, no live gifts. Uh, <laughs> we've gone through, that was many, many years ago. That was when my daughters, who are now 27 and 24, that was when they were young. And, you know, we've had dogs since then. And um, no, no live gifts is the rule anymore going forward. Nothing that has to be fed, watered, or taken outside is, is the rule for Christmas. We're on our last dog, I think. Uh, I don't think we'll get any more dogs after Bo Duke, who's our current dog. He's a lab husky mix, and he's a great boy, um, but he's big and he's a handful. And I think that by the time he is no longer with us, we'll be to an age where we will have all of our kids out of the house and then maybe Jeff and I will want to do some traveling or at least some, you know, going away overnight and not have to worry about boarding a dog or taking a dog with us camping and that kind of thing. So he's going to be our last, he'll be our last puppy. He, he is not a puppy anymore, but he'll be our last guy. <clears throat> and um, the next question is, what is my favorite holiday scent? I am a sucker for candles. I love to be burning candles. And I love cinnamon scented. So anything with cinnamon. If it's apple cinnamon, just plain cinnamon, um, anything with cinnamon, I love that scent for Christmas. The scents I hate, I absolutely cannot stand anything with maple. Um, if it has any sort of mapley scent in it. It is a definite no-no. It's not happening in my house. You can just get that stuff right out of here because I am not going to have it. Have it. Um, not up in here. That was from a movie. I don't remember what movie that was. I said not up in here. Uh, then my favorite Christmas movie. Now this is kind of a funny story. I have been watching the movie Elf on I think it's on stars right now. I have watched the Christmas movie Elf multiple times a day, every day, for at least the past month. And it never gets old. 
I can recite every dialogue by heart um, and I don't get tired of it. I love, love, love that movie. It's just an amazing movie. Uh, second, I, I'd say the runner-up would have to be The Grinch. And I mean The Grinch, the original Grinch, the animated Grinch that came out in the 70s or 80s, where they actually read from the book all of the dialogue or, is, or the narration is um, reading from the book. Uh, how the Grinch Stole Christmas. That to me is the quintessential Christmas movie, but it's short. So I can't watch that, you know, back to back to back to back like I can do Elf. What it, with, with Elf, I can just keep watching it and watching it. Uh, I love all the music that they play in Elf, you know, every time. It, this isn't even, it's not even a Christmas song. Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven, shoo be do be. I love that line. It's great. Um, and then, you know, the Baby It's Cold Outside, which, you know, I got mixed feelings about that song. And I know a lot of people do. And I know it was kind of a big controversy. It's, um, you know, the lyrics are a little bit questionable, uh, a little on the creepy side. But it has a nice melody. And the singing is really good, the, you know, the, as far as their voices and stuff. So I try not to think about it being a, you know, so much of a, um, a bad song um, when I'm singing along with it. But it really kind of is if you listen to the words. My other favorite holiday movie that I've been watching a lot of this year is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. First of all, love Chevy Chase. He's a hilarious guy. And second of all, love even more Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie has got to be the best character that's ever been written into um, a family a, or a group of family movies. Everybody in their family, I don't care who you are, has some form of a Cousin Eddie. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm sure almost everybody does, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Cousin Eddie's the guy who wears the pleather jackets and um, the dickies, and he hasn't had a job in seven years because he's holding out for management, and they are, he's, um, you know, a freeloader and beer drinking, uh, you know, just drinking all the time, and um, just a funny, funny, funny guy. And I think every family has a Cousin Eddie to a degree. Definitely, probably not to the degree that the real Cousin Eddie is, but I think every family has a Cousin Eddie. So the next question is, if you could put yourself in a holiday movie, what would that movie be? And it would be, I would put myself into National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Just because I want to meet Cousin Eddie in real life. I think he would be a hoot and be so much fun to uh, to watch his shenanigans, for sure, Def with, without a doubt. All right, the next question that I have here is, um, am I on the naughty list or the nice list? I think it de depends on who you ask. I believe I'm on the nice list because, you know, I try to go out of my way to do nice things for people. I volunteered at Nate's school up until uh, the point where um, parents could no longer come into the schools because of health concerns. Uh, so they're not allowing any volunteers. Um, and I am a very giving person. i pretty generous and... Um, I'm concerned with other people's happiness a lot. And I'm also very humble. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's rich. No, uh, but I think I'm on the nice list. Now, if you asked my husband, he would probably put me on the naughty list. I'm thinking for sure he would put me on the naughty list. 
and not for, you know, naughty reasons like you might be thinking, but just because my husband does a lot for me. He's, I'm basically a kept woman and, um, he probably wishes maybe, uh, maybe he wishes I was a little bit different. So he might, he might put me on the naughty list, but I hope I'm on the nice list. I, judging by my gift that I'm getting this year, I'm definitely on the nice list. I got a new sewing machine for Christmas. I'm super excited. Don't know the first thing about sewing. I even went on to uh, the Joann's website and they have an online class that you can take for an introduction to sewing, kind of a sewing 101 that kind of introduces you to the machine and the mechanics of the machine and what it takes to get your machine set up and that kind of thing. And it's not model specific. So your specific machine is going to be a little bit different, but they kind of tell you all the parts, you know, the foot put the foot pedal and the bobbin and the, um, the plates, the different plates that you can change out and that kind of thing. But I'm hoping that I can find something that's a little bit more specific to the model that I got so that I can uh, easily set it up and get sewing on something. I don't know what I'm going to sew. I think I'm going to start with something easy and that it won't matter if it doesn't come out perfect. So my plan is I'm going to start with a pet bed. That was actually a recommendation from one of my viewers. And I think that it was, a, it was an excellent idea because if I screw it up and my stitching isn't, my sewing isn't perfect, the dog isn't going to complain about it. So I'm going to start with a pet bed. Um, then I'm going to make maybe some, I don't know, pot holders or some pillowcases, um, some things like that until I get the hang of doing it and then we'll move on to something a little bit more complicated. But I hope that I take to it because, you know, it was a little bit of an investment. We didn't want to get the top of the line machine because I don't know that I'm going to like it or be talented at it. But on the same hand, we didn't want to get a bottom of the line machine either. You know, so we kind of went mid range on it but it was still a little bit of an investment. So I hope that it's something that I'm gonna be able to take to and be able to handle, you know, easily, rather easily. Uh, so that's what I got for Christmas this year. That's my big gift is a sewing machine. And I of course know it before Christmas because I did help Jeff pick out the model. That wasn't something he felt comfortable doing on his own. And I'm glad because that way, you know, I get what I want and, and he's getting, you know, um, he's getting me a great gift. So it works. It's going to work out perfectly. So um, my next question is, do you travel for Christmas or stay home? I am 46 years old and I have never traveled for Christmas. Not farther than grandma's house. That's the farthest I've ever gone away for Christmas was, you know, to my grandma's house, which is 15 minutes away. I can't imagine traveling for Christmas. We actually considered this year doing a Florida vacation for Christmas, but I also can't imagine, and this is one of the next questions, so we'll just go right into it, is have you ever had a white Christmas? I can count on one hand in my lifetime the number of times that I haven't had a white Christmas. Uh, we live in Michigan and northern Michigan and we almost always have snow. I remember one time when I was a child we had an unseasonably warm Christmas. It was about 70 degrees. We had the front door open and the windows open and everything and I remember just thinking how odd that was and it just it, it just really felt out of place and out of the norm. It, you know, it didn't feel like Christmas at all. So yes, I have had a white Christmas and I almost always have a white Christmas. It did snow today. So I'm hoping that the snow from today will stick around for Christmas and um, that we'll have a white Christmas this year. Or I hope that we will get more snow because 
it is a little bit magical, I think, to have snow for Christmas. Now, after Christmas is over with, that's another story. It can just all go away, and I would be perfectly fine with that. Um, unfortunately, in here in Michigan, our real winter weather doesn't ramp up until um, it doesn't ramp up until about January and February. So that's when I can be expecting the most snow, uh, but. I don't want it then. <laughs> I want it now, this week, and that's it. And then I want it to go away. But we can't always get what we want, can we? Um, it would be a nice world, but we can't always get what we want. All right. So the next question that I have is, um, do I start shopping on Black Friday or do I wait until the last minute? And if you know me at all, you know the answer to this question. I am a last minute shopper and I am um, because I, my nickname around the house, well, it's Crabnado, but my other nickname around the house is Boil Over Angie because anything that I do, if I'm going to do something, I don't just do it a little bit. I go way overboard and I do it 150%. So if there is still a dollar in my bank account when Christmas Day arrives, I've done something wrong. Um, I will shop until there's no money left or I run out of time, whichever comes first. So I am a last minute shopper and that's just based on, I always get paid, it seems like, right before Christmas. So I want to go out and spend that money and buy more gifts because I love giving. Uh, giving is my favorite part of the holidays. You know, food is nice and getting gifts is okay. But my favorite part of the holiday by far is giving gifts. I love to give gifts. I love to give gifts any time of the year. But during the holidays, I especially like it. Now, when it comes to um, crafty type things, however, I do start very, very early with my crafting um, gifts. Like I had a cross stitch that I wanted to do for my mother-in-law for Christmas. I started that in September. I did not get it finished because it's on 36 count linen and it's a giant sampler. I did not get it finished, so it's gonna turn into a Mother's Day gift for her. Here in the US, we celebrate Mother's Day in May, so I will definitely have it done by May, and that will be her Mother's Day gift. But my diamond paintings and crocheting um, projects, I definitely started all of those way before Black Friday. So Black Friday, I don't really do any shopping on Black Friday anymore unless it's online. I used to be one who went out to the stores, but it seems like in the olden days they had more sales, more like doorbuster, got to get there at 5 a.m. or you're not going to get the good deal. And maybe it's just because my children are older now um, that the stuff that they want doesn't apply to those doorbuster type deals. Or maybe it's just the way of the world and, you know, it, they don't do that as much anymore. But I do not Black Friday shop anymore. So um, I am a last minute shopper, but I am a very prepared crafter when it comes to trying to get um, gifts finished. And I do hand make a lot of my Christmas gifts. I have many crocheted Christmas gifts this year, um, many diamond painting Christmas gifts this year, and I had the one cross stitch, but like I said, it didn't quite get done. Did not quite get finished with that. Um, so the next question is, um, if I could be, oh, I already answered that one. Uh, when do I put up the tree and who decorates it? And I think I talked about that already. We put up the tree the second week in November this year, and we decorated as a family. I'm in charge of fluffing the branches. So because it's an artificial tree, you know, you have to manipulate and um, 
fluff out all the branches. So that's my job. Then Jeff is in charge of putting the lights on. And I always critique him no matter how well he does. I always have a critique for him. Uh, Jeff puts on all the lights. And then the children will put on the decorations with my help. Maddie claims that she's the only one. She's my 24-year-old daughter. She's the only one who sees it through to the end and really makes sure that all the decorations get put on the tree. And, you know, that may be partially true. Um, Nate kind of peters out. He's the 13-year-old. He kind of peters out a little bit towards the end. Uh, he, he's, in, he's into it for the first 15 minutes, and then he's like, ah, eh, you know, kind of over it. And, and so Maddie's the one who sticks it through to the end and, and gets all the, make sure all the ornaments get on the tree. Then um, the next question was um, real or fake tree? Fake tree, I already said that. Um, the next question is, do I peek at gifts or do I like to be surprised? I love surprises. However, I very rarely get them. Um, because Jeff doesn't want to, because Jeff doesn't want to get me anything that, um, I might not necessarily like, he always discusses my gifts with me, which is fine. Um, but if I did have surprises, I definitely would never peek at them. Because I, I would like to have I would like to have surprises. I think surprises are the most fun. And I like to have surprise gifts to give as well. I don't tell anybody what they're getting. I like to I like to make sure that they're surprised. Um the next question is who would I be under the mistletoe with if I could be under the mistletoe with anyone? So I'm gonna tell you the answer that is the um, correct answer and then I'm going to tell you how I really feel I want to be under the mistletoe with my husband right that's the correct answer that's the answer I'm supposed to give but the real answer is if I could pick anybody to be under the mistletoe with it would probably be Chris Pratt who plays Star-Lord on Guardians of the Galaxy yeah he is um he looks like he would be a very nice guy. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. He looks like he would be a really nice guy. Um, and probably a good kisser. So the next question is, um, what is a family holiday recipe that I like to help make? I make for Christmas and I make four batches of this between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I make four batches of cheesy potatoes and everybody makes their cheesy potatoes a little bit differently so I'll tell you what my cheesy potatoes are like. We use hash browns and this is kind of funny because these became my famous cheesy potatoes. They're requested for every holiday but recently I taught Jeff how to make them and so now um they're Jeff's cheesy potatoes. Um, and he does a fabulous job. He does a better job than I did. So what you do is you cut up a medium onion. I like to use a Vidalia onion because I don't like a very strong oniony taste. Cut up a Vidalia onion. And Vidalia onions can be quite large. So I like to use about half of the onion. And melt um, two sticks of butter. And kind of saute them in a pan until the onions are nice and soft and a little bit browned. And then you take uh, frozen hash browns and two cans of cream of chicken soup um, and a one pound can carton of sour cream and two bags of shredded cheese and two bags or one and a half to two bags of shredded frozen hash browns. And you mix that all together, put it in the oven for two and a half hours, and they are the most delicious, yummy, cheesy potatoes that I've ever had. Super, super yummy and creamy and cheesy and good. 
and they get nice and crisp and brown on the top and on the bottom and they're just to die for so we have to buy or we have to make four batches of that between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day um, we and then I have to make it again on New Year's but we uh, it's a thing around here and I don't know if this is a national thing or if it's just in our area you cannot find if you wait too close to Christmas you cannot find hash browns in the store like they're just not there they're sold out weeks ahead of time so we were really smart this year so we wouldn't have to go chasing around and Jeff bought all the hash browns about three weeks ago so we're our freezers are full of eight bags of hash browns right now um, but at least we have them and we're not scrambling around at the last minute my other famous holiday recipe is something that I make for just about every holiday I make it for Thanksgiving for an appetizer type snack snacky food uh, and I make it for I make it for other holidays too or other parties as um, my ham roll dip I know a lot of ham rolls are very popular at Christmas and they can be very time consuming to make and very tedious to make. So I learned this recipe probably 25 years ago. Uh, rather than doing the actual ham rolls themselves, you take the cream cheese and then you take sliced sandwich ham uh, and cut it up into very small pieces. Then you take your green onions, and I use my Pampered Chef food chopper, and I chop them up really fine. And then I put those all in my mixer, and I mix, you know, just get it all mixed together, and then form kind of like a cheese ball out of it, and then serve it with crackers. And you've got the same taste of a ham roll, but without having to um, do all of that rolling and slicing. It's just way easier to put together. Tastes exactly the same, if not better, because you got crackers with it. And, um, and yeah, easy, easy peasy and delicious. So those are my two uh, favorite family recipes that I like to do for the holidays. The other one, probably one last one, would be my family recipe for chocolate chip cookies. I think I mentioned this a while back that my grandfather owned a bakery and he had a very special recipe for chocolate chip cookies. It's not your standard, you know, Toll House recipe or anything like that. It's a recipe that he came up with and they are hands down the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. And they're thin and chewy and just buttery and delicious. So I am always in charge of making the chocolate chip cookies for the family. Because it's a bakery recipe, they um, are, it calls for five cups of flour. So you can imagine how big a batch is. Five cups of, of flour and two packs of chocolate chips. So one batch makes quite a bit. And when I make them for our cookie exchange, I make three batches. So I, we end up with a ton of chocolate chip cookies and we go through them. There have been years when I've had to make an additional batch just because we've gone through them all before Christmas has even gotten here. So those are my, um, those are my recipes. The next question is, am I a pro present wrapper or do I fail miserably? There are two answers to that question. Two answers to that question. I can wrap a mean present. Like, I can make a gift look beautiful like nobody's business. However, now I've got a guy for that. Jeff wrapped every single gift this year. And did he wrap them beautifully and perfectly with embellishments and bows and ribbons and tissue paper? And um, did he do it like I would do it? No, he did not. Do I care? No, I do not because it's done and it's one less thing that I had to do and I am thankful to have it done and under my belt um, and not be have one less thing to have to stress about. So yes, I am a pro present wrapper, but I fail miserably also because I didn't do the wrapping. I let Jeff do all the wrapping. 
So I like to say, I got a guy for that. I got, I got a guy who does that for me. So the next question is, have I ever gone Christmas caroling? And I know that a lot of people out there would probably, I would say probably the majority of people out there would say no to that question. I am one of the lucky few that I can say, yes, I have been Christmas caroling. When my daughter Emily was in Girl Scouts, we went Christmas caroling. And then when my daughter Maddie was in Pom Pom, we went Christmas caroling. And I have to say, it was so much fun. I am not a great singer. You do not want to hear me sing. Nobody wants to hear me sing. But it was a blast. And people were so appreciative and kind and hospitable um, about having strangers show up at their door singing. I, I was a little bit nervous about it when we started. I thought, these people are going to slam the doors in our faces. You know what I mean? They're not going to want to listen to these kids singing. But no, they, they did. Everybody was just wonderful about it. They, they really, um, really enjoyed having us there. So if I were ever had a group situation where I could do that again, I would definitely consider doing it again because it was really fun. Maybe I will talk um, the family tonight after I'm done with this premiere. Uh, maybe I will talk them into doing some caroling on Christmas night. That would be fun. We'll be, um, as I mentioned, as this um, premiere is being um, aired, I am going to be at my friend Jennifer's celebrating Christmas with her. She lives in a neighborhood that would be definitely conducive to caroling. There's lots of neighbors close by. It wouldn't work for me here where I live. We live in the country and we would have to walk a very long way before we got to a neighbor. So uh, Christmas caroling here would be a little bit rough. But Christmas, we could do it from her neighborhood. And we were actually looking for something fun to do, a fun game to play or something fun to do. So maybe that would be something that we that I could talk them into doing. I don't know. We'll see. I, I have my doubts that, that they would be willing to do it. But we'll see. I'll let you know um, because I'll be there. Or you you know that I'm there because you're I'm there with you. I'm still I'm new to premieres, you guys, <laughs> so um, I'm here with you. But I'll let you know what they say about caroling if we're gonna go caroling or not. Um, I'm gonna try to talk everybody into it. I think that's an excellent activity and a super great idea. So we're gonna we're gonna try for that. We'll try for caroling this year. Try for that tonight. Um, what tops my, the next question is what tops your tree so for years and years and years we had an angel on top of our tree and she was a beautiful angel very classy um she had gold wings and a golden halo and a golden flowing burgund and burgundy dress and she was just very very pretty a few years ago, we were at Bronner's, which I have talked about Bronner's before. Bronner's is the single largest Christmas store in the entire world. And it's open. Oh, wow. I spilled drills everywhere. Love it when that happens. Um, but it is open 364 days a year. The only day it's closed is Christmas Day. And it is very close to us. It's in a neighboring community called Frankenmuth, which is like a German uh, Bavarian type old it's like in the style of old Bavaria and um, we were at Bronner's a few years ago and I saw the most delightfully tacky Christmas tree topper and I decided that I had to have it and that has been our topper ever since and it is a Christmas star and what's great about this Christmas star is it lights up in multiple flashing colors it's like so 70s it's amazing i love it um and my family hates it they want to go back to the angel and i won't let it happen i love this i love the star the star is here to stay but it does have one burnt out light the blue light burned out but i don't i think that makes it even more tacky and so you know this the, it, it's here to stay we're keeping the star uh, the next question is, 
Do I make New Year's resolutions and do I stick to them? I have never made a New Year's resolution. Um, I don't know why. I guess it's because I pretty much like my life the way it is and I don't feel like there's anything that I need to drastically change. So, no, I've, I've never made a New Year's resolution. But if I did, knowing myself and my contradictory nature, I would say that I probably would never stick to it. Like, yeah, no. I, if I had to make a New Year's resolution, it would last maybe a day. I don't know, you guys who follow my channel, if you remember back in August when I decided I was going to do no new starts for the month of August for diamond painting. Well, for any craft, I was going to try to get caught up on um, all of the whips that I had going. And I was going to spend an entire month with no new starts. I managed to do that, but it nearly killed me. It very, very nearly, um, yes, it very, very nearly took my life. Uh, it was one of the hardest things that I've honestly ever done. I have zero willpower and uh, very little impulse control. And I, um, yeah, I really, really uh, struggle with that. So I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to keep a resolution. So there's no sense making one. No sense at all. And the very last question that I have on this list is, if I had one Christmas wish, what would it be? Okay, if I had one Christmas wish, it would be, and this is a no-brainer, it would be that I would be able to give everyone everything that they want for Christmas. I wish that I had the capability to make everybody's dreams come true for Christmas. My parents instilled in me um, a very giving nature and I love giving way more than I love receiving. And that goes for all times of year, not just Christmas. I love giving gifts. I love giving just little surprises, um, little unexpected surprises to family and friends and even total strangers. Um, and if so, yes, that is my response to that. If, if I could do it, I wish I had the ability to make everyone's dreams come true and give them everything that they wanted. And I think that we did pretty good this year um, as far as fulfilling our kids' uh, dreams and the things that they wanted. Pretty sure we did, we did pretty well. So that's the end of the questions that I had. And um, that is about the end of what I um, have to talk about. So I would love to hear from you guys as always. I love to hear from you guys and let me know how your holiday went or is going. Let me know how your holiday is going. Let me know what you received for Christmas. What was your favorite gift? Um, and what did you do? Um, were you diamond painting and relaxing and crafting? Did you have a lot of company? Did you have to go a lot of places? It was it super busy for you or are you just relaxing at home hopefully by the time this airs I will be um, able to begin my relaxing we'll be at Jennifer's like I said but we will be um, we will be relaxing that's a pretty laid-back atmosphere there it's just like being at home so I won't be doing any crafting yet but in a couple hours I'll be doing crafting for sure for sure, within a couple of hours, I'll be I'll be back to hitting the crafts. And I have to tell you, I have been working on Christmas gifts and Christmas-related craft items for so many months and for so very long that I am really looking forward to getting into a diamond painting that has nothing to do with Christmas and nothing to do with gift giving that I'm going to do just for the fun of it. You know, something just for me something just for the fun of it. And I'm really, really craving 
um, to do a round diamond painting. It seems like I've been focusing on square diamond paintings almost exclusively. It just, it wasn't a plan. I didn't plan it that way. It just so happened that all of the gifts that I decided to make uh, for the holiday season happened to be square diamond paintings. So I'm really itching to get into a round kit and, um, and, and work on something with a little bit different of a color palette, you know, other than your traditional Christmas uh, colors. So thank you guys all for spending this time with me and taking time out of your day to share your time with me. Um, I hope that you've all had a great Christmas and that you continue to have a great Christmas. And I am so glad to have been able to participate in this event. It has been my honor to be able to come into your lives and share in this special day with you. So thank you so much to that for that. And thank you to Pippa Brown for organizing this and putting it all together. And um, I will see you guys uh, on Thursday for um, my next Whip and Chat. Um, you'll see me before then if you subscribe to my channel with some unboxing videos and things like that. But um, I will I will be on I will be back on Thursday for another Whip and Chat. So I hope you'll pop in and chat with me then again. So. Have a great night, everyone, and a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Good night.